what would you like to see change in your life? And what is the biggest obstacle that you're facing now? I run a five-week program at the Inner Knowing School for serious individuals who are ready to take the next step in their personal and professional lives. I will personally be coaching a small group of individuals, a number of practical tools and frameworks for creating an intuition practice and for self-mastery. You can find more at theinnerknowingschool.com. I have a master certification in intuition medicine, and I've condensed 10 plus years of experience and research navigating how to harness your energy and intuition in an easy to access live curated course. Now, as someone who's helped countless creatives, entrepreneurs, and many who are just plain stuck, open doors of possibility they never thought existed, I've seen this strategy transform people's interstates and external reality. And the best part is that you'll skyrocket your output and unlock your creative genius. I'll work with you weekly live to overcome your limiting beliefs and show you how to manage your energy instead of your time. I'll teach you how to create clarity, processes, develop your intuition based on some of the top tools and frameworks that I've developed, and you'll get access to guided meditations and visualizations not available anywhere else. This method is so effective that even if you don't have that much time or if you think that you might not be ready, this will work for you. You can check out the link in the show notes to join the waiting list, and you can check out what past clients had to say about the program. Wishing you all many blessings ahead. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Blood Moon Box a monthly subscription box service for period pads and tampons to help support all humans who have a cycle for that time of the month and no need to run to a store to mix and match period supplies that don't cater to the entire ebbs and flows of your cycle. There are two box options based on your cycle, light and medium, and then heavy. And in addition to the period products, you'll also receive PMS herbal teas, a candle, and some other items for your time of the month. You can reserve a box by navigating to bloodmoonbox.com. And bloodmoonbox.com is on a mission to destigmatize the idea of period blood. At Blood Moon Box, they believe that it is the time to honor the enchanting magic within every person who has a cycle. So join us in embracing the magic of your cycle with Blood Moon Box. Hi, my name is Yasmin Tarehi, and this is Gateways to Awakening, where we host one on one conversations with leading experts in wellness, well being, and spirituality. Today's episode is about awakening to our womb and biomancy with Dr. Azra Bertrand, who is an award-winning author, physician, healer, and mystic, and the founder of Biomancy University, a visionary new model of biomagical education, which we're going to get into in the show. He also received his medical doctorate from Duke University and holds a degree in biochemistry. Dr. Bertrand conducted neuroendocrinology research at the National Institutes of Health in Mother Child bonding and attachment before completing his residency in family medicine through the University of California in San Francisco. And he is currently the director of Biomancy University. And so we're going to talk about that on the show. So welcome to the show, Azra. Thank you, Yasmin. I'm really happy to be here. Likewise. So to kick it off, Azra, you know, what is Biomancy? I think for many people listening, this is probably a new term. Yeah, sure, sure. So so biomancy is really about earth-connected awakening. So the word itself is a combination of, of bio or life, biology, and mancy, which means magic uh, or, or, or oracular or, you know, just magical. And so our, our body and the natural world are, are full of magic and it's very real magic. So this is not fantasy out there stuff. This is just how our bodies and the world works. And I know my background is in healing. I'm, I'm a medical doctor. I did research at the National Institutes of Health and no one was teaching me about, about the, the spirit in our bodies, the magic in our bodies. And so I founded Biomancy University to really teach this 
a groundbreaking new model of education where it's all about the arts and and science of of how how we really work you know the full the a more full picture so let's get into exactly what biomancy is and why it's so important to kind of our overall health and well-being why you decided to create a university around it you know let's kind of explore the the major themes yeah, sure, sure. So my my life path thus far has been all about healing. So studying medicine, studying healing. I, um, you know, from the the beginning in medical school, I knew that what I was going to be learning there was going to be an incomplete picture. <laughs> so I came in, I came in with that awareness, and you know, it's like on on the first day of of medical school. I, I, I was, I was reading books about alternative healing. I was, you know, Andrew Wilde's books at that time, you know, and, and it just, um, it went out from there. And what I, what I learned is that of course our, our healing, our health, our well being, is completely intertangled, you know, entangled or, or interconnected with the natural world, with the health of the planet, um, with the forest, with the ecosystems, there's no separation and of course, it's completely entangled with our emotions and our spirit and our magic. And the more, and I, I worked, I treated as as a clinical doctor thirty thousand patients, you know, over over fifteen twenty years. And then after that, I I expanded my vision really of what what healing was and understanding that. We are really, I mean, the, the biggest crisis that we're facing on this earth as humans is a crisis in our perception and not being able to, to hear the hidden languages of nature and the subtle languages of nature. So just can, like a person can be a horse whisperer and understand the nonverbal communication of a horse or, or any animal, we can begin to be an earth whisperer, plant whisperer. And... And as we do this, and as we as we deepen our interconnection with the natural world, then then everything becomes more alive in our bodies, and it has really practical applications in the world of healing and somatic healing, and in psychology, and in regulating our nervous system. So this is. Um, you know, that's it's a new vision and a, and a philosophy that's actually an old vision, an ancient vision that would be familiar to many indigenous cultures and elder cultures. Um, but it's it's really, you know, it's it's really about taking this these old wisdoms and old truths and and merging them with science, and merging them with the modern healing movements. And and really taking our next evolutionary leap, and so I mean the really the very short answer after after all that is I got into this because it is a more effective and more powerful, and more beautiful way of healing from my perspective. So let's dig into some of the maybe practical uh, applications of biomancy, especially for folks you know living in the West. I, I love that you know you kind of talk about this aliveness that is. Um, something that that I think most humans living in the Western world, especially ones who are maybe working in the corporate world or working at a desk, is sort of detached from the natural world or from our earth, right? Many of us hardly spend any time outside anymore um, in in the Western world, I'd say. And I'm generalizing, of course. I know that that there's that's that's more, maybe more of a generalization. But what can people do, maybe starting today, for folks who are listening, um, what can they do to sort of integrate that uh, connection with, with nature, with the seasons, with the sort of movement um, of the cosmos? How, how, what, would you, what would you say to them? Sure, right. I, I, I frame this as how do we ancestralize our biology while living in a modern world, right? And so, so this, is a, <laughs> this is the framework. And, and to just take this big picture to understand what we're talking about is that, of course, our biology, our bodies have evolved over hundreds of millions of years in harmony and in primary relationship to sunlight and to the geomagnetic field, you know, the Earth's magnetic fields, and the natural electromagnetic frequencies of the Earth. And so any conception 
of healing without being in touch with this is going to be limited or incomplete at best. And a really practical fact that most people don't understand is that sunlight impacts something like 80 to 90% of our gene expression. So 80 to 90% of our genes are impacted and affected by sunlight versus if we're, we're talking about exercise or nutrition, which are really important and which most people focus on when they think about how they're going to get healthy, that, that's impacting 20, 25% of our genetic expression. So it's just, just a relative contribution of, of, of be, being out in natural light. And you begin to get a sense of it. And so practically, if you, if you just have a few minutes of five minutes and how are you going to get out there and, and connect and start opening your biology to work in new ways, is to get out there if you can and however you can, just to put your bare feet on the earth, right? Obviously, if it's winter, it's going to be a different <laughs> situation, right? But but if you can, get out there and put, put your bare feet on the earth. And and what you're doing when, you, when you're doing that, and also opening your heart to the earth, your, your sense of connection, relational connection at the same time, right? It's not just some inert object that we're, you know, kind of taking something from, but but this is a living being. Earth is a superorganism, and and we're a part. We're cell in her body, right? We're a part of of Earth. And as we're doing that, we are all of a sudden receiving her ec- electrons that are coming up into our bodies, which are are typically deficient of electrons. When that happens, inflammation is reduced. Our our body st- tends to work better. All of our cell to cell communications happen much more gracefully. And, and our body just breathes this big sigh of relief. And, and that's just a very simple practice. And, and so it's earthing, it's grounding, it's happening at a biochemical level. It's happening at a, at a bioelectromagnetic level because our bodies, we are quantum electromagnetic beings. And, and so there's a, that's a very simple practice, but has a profound capacity to clear our minds to help begin to regulate our nervous systems or calm our nervous systems to center and focus ourselves. So that's a very, very simple practice that has a powerful result. And how much time do we need uh, to connect to the earth or how much time do you kind of see, you know, from your practice or your perspective, what's sort of like the, the cutoff time for people? <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right, right. What's, what's, what's the bare minimum? What's the bare minimum? <laughs> yeah, right. So you know, for, (laughs) if you're listening to this podcast, right, you are probably a nature lover and you'd probably love to spend so much time at the beach, uh, in the, in the, you know, in the woods, maybe on a mountaintop, maybe, um, just in a grassy meadow, relaxing. (laughs) But of course, you know, we're, we're living in a modern world and in every, and folks listening here are going to at least have one foot if not both feet, really, in that modern world, we're working. I, I have a, a three-year-old daughter. She is a fireball, and from six a.m. until eight or nine p.m., it is a it's 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 a wild, you know, whirlwind of activity. I'm I'm doing my, you know, I'm I'm communicating, I'm connecting, I'm getting online and doing work after she goes to sleep, <laughs> you know, and, and at the same time, right, I and many other people, we need to keep our our biology healthy, our circadian rhythms healthy. And so there are tips and tricks to this. You know, what I do is I'm, you know, every day I go out for five minutes in the morning as as early as I can around sunrise, as the light starts to come in and change. And I try to do the same thing as the sun is beginning to set and, and certainly before I go to sleep at night. So whether you're in a beautiful, natural, rural area or in a, you know, in a, in a big city, you can, you can get out and look at the night sky. You can find a little, little, little place, a little park, a little, you know, some, some place to connect at least in the morning. And, and so that's what I say to folks, do what you can. And then obviously the more you can get in this, in this rhythm, the, the, the deeper, the biological effects, but it doesn't take much. It really doesn't take much to 
start a healing cascade and a positive cascade. And the research shows, for example, that if someone's in a hospital recovering from some kind of an injury or a surgery or you know, medical illness, if there is even simply a photo, a picture of, of nature in the room, it improves recovery time. It speeds recovery time. Even better if there's a window looking out onto nature. And it's the same if there's a, if a house plant in, in your room, a small plant in your room. These things make a, a scientifically validated difference in, in you know, many aspects of your health. Wow. I love that so much. And uh, amen to the house plants. I, I, <laughs> I really do feel how differently it feels to be in a room when there's something living from nature in, yeah. uh, in, our, in our homes. Okay. So, so put your bare feet in the earth, spend as much time as you can in the sun, maybe in increments throughout the day, wake up at sunrise. So you also spoke about um, the geomagnetic field of the earth. Can you explain uh, what this means and and why we should be tracking this? Yeah, sure, right. This is one of the most overlooked and fundamental pieces of health and life on this planet. And again, it's just take a take a step back. We'll take a step back and give a little context to this. What makes life possible on this planet? How is the Earth say different from Mars? And a lot of people will say, "Oh, there's water on this planet. There's no no water on Mars." Right, but why is that? Why is there water on Earth, not much water on Mars? Well, it's because we have this magnetic field at the that emanates up from the core of our Earth, from the core of our planet, that that forms this incredible shield around our planet and protects us from cosmic radiation and solar winds. Without that magnetic shield, Earth would look a lot like Mars, which has a much smaller magnetic field. So it's this magnetic field that makes life possible. And every cell in, in existence, so whether that's the cell of the, the microbiome in the soil or the cells in your body or the cells in the plants and animals, every cell has evolved in relationship to this magnetic field of earth. And when that field is taken away, our cells degrade and die. And we know this, it's called being in a, you know, the scientific word is being in a hypomagnetic environment. It means, it means, <laughs> you know, underneath the, the kind of normal magnetic, natural magnetic field that we, we need to thrive. And when that happens, everything goes haywire. And, and so you may, people may have heard of this in the context of space travel. And when astronauts go up into space or stay, especially if they stay in a space station or something like that for a period of time, their biology starts to degrade, their bones start to degrade. And in fact, everything will begin to fall apart without that magnetic field. So that's how fundamentally important it is. And practically, practically, what does it, what does it do for us? What does it affect in our life? What difference does it make when we go out and when we're in connection with the Earth's magnetic field. Now, if you're in a building, especially buildings with that was with steel reinforcement or steel walls or something like that, you are not exposed. You, you know, you're, you're you're not experiencing that magnetic field. Especially if you're out on the Earth, you are. And when you are in relationship to that magnetic field, magnetic field of the Earth, it begins to reshape. For example your gut microbiome, all of the small organisms in our, in our GI tract that allow us to digest and absorb nutrients, to eliminate waste, and beyond that, that actually allow our, our overall health comes from our, or is really affected by our microbiome. And that microbiome is, is really responsive to magnetic fields, it turns out, and thrives when it's really in contact with the Earth's magnetic field and goes haywire when we're in and when we're not in contact or when we're in contact with more toxic man-made electromagnetic fields. So it's a it's a big deal. 
So, okay, so this is uh, amazing. So I just want to go out and play in nature right now. <laughs> this, yeah. this conversation is uh, just inspiring me to, to really feel more connected to the earth. And, and it's interesting because I think some people do have more access maybe to nature. Um, but you're saying, you know, you, you can work with whatever environment you're in, essentially, and, and just start with incremental kind of small shifts and then move into kind of larger shifts. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned earlier that, you know, we're in this kind of crisis in perception. Um, can you right. talk a little bit more about what you, what you mean by that? Yeah, right. Okay. So, so for everyone, again, everyone listening to this podcast understands that the biosphere of the earth is in trouble right now. We've, we've already lost 50% of the species on this planet over the past few hundred years. And that is accelerating, right? And everyone knows the story. I'm not going to go into it too deeply now. Uh, however, we, we have to ask ourselves, right? Everyone needs to be asking ourselves for our lives and for our children and for the future of humanity, how do we get out of this? What, what caused it in the first place? What was the error in our, in our thinking or in our, in our actions? What happened? And if you... If you look at, I mean, the, the living the living wisdom of intact indigenous cultures and the recorded wisdom of the elder cultures, what you see is that they perceived, directly perceived the aliveness of the natural world. So we look at a tree and it's not just some inert thing that maybe we can use to build a building or for firewood or, oh, maybe it's even pretty, right? No, it's it has an intelligence, a consciousness a wisdom it's been on this earth you know the trees have been on this earth evolutionarily speaking for 500 million years <laughs> whereas humans and hominids for maybe a few million and and so just to understand that the trees think they have intelligence they recognize their their kin their offspring they can differentiate uh, who's a direct offspring of from them and who's a neighboring tree's children they communicate in uh, villages, so, so they they communicate underground via root networks and mycorrhizal networks to all the other plants and and trees in a forest, sharing information, sharing uh, nutrition, and you know the point is that that they have memories. They have trees actually have imaginations or associative memory, associative learning, which is something that is very recently discovered, and so and so this this perspective this perce it's not really perspective it's a direct perception of the of the living pulsing vitality of the world as something that everyone used to perceive and and has been lost right and this is what i mean by eco magic and bio magic is the world is alive and not not just as a metaphor right there's consciousness in all things and you know from a western tradition this goes back to to Plato and and some of the early philosophies that underpinned Western civilization. One of Plato's quotes, I'm going to paraphrase, is that the world is a living being that has a soul. It's called the anima mundi or the world soul. And we are a part of that. We are participating in that world soul. And so when I say there's a crisis of perception is that most modern people have lost that direct perception with our senses and with our extrasensory perception that was common to all of the elder cultures and we need to be asking ourselves one of the most the most important questions is how do we get back to that because when we can feel directly or perceive directly this aliveness and this relational connection to the natural world around us we're going to love it so deeply we're going to feel how it's part of us and how it's our kin it's part of our relational our, our family and when we when we come into that direct love and devotional connection we cannot help but to reshape our world and reshape the way we live in it and this is what's going to see us through because i'm despite <laughs> despite the crisis that is here and that is only going to get worse i am extremely optimistic that we are going to find a way through as as a humanity, and it's going to be through this these kind of arts and sciences of earth magic and body magic. 
So yeah, wow. I'm uh, I'm feeling so inspired by this conversation. Just this, you know, the remembering really of this connection that we've always had, but we sort of are not aware of in our kind of day to day life. Um, you know, it does feel like that it creates a relationship with the earth as opposed to feeling that one just lives on it, you know, that, that it's actually, we're, we're in this kind of co-creative space together. Um, so Azra, I want to talk a little bit more about biomancy and perhaps maybe ground the concepts of biomancy and how it's perhaps maybe healed, uh, people or healed systems, perhaps you can share a story or two of some of the work you've done with biomancy as it relates to people or or the earth. Sure, right, yeah. So, and this is this is so important, and it's really immensely practical. And and so I'm I'm going to approach this for a moment through the lens of trauma healing. And and again, the context here is that. I trained as a medical doctor. I, I, my research at the National Institutes of Health was in early childhood attachment, mother-child or parent-child bonding, and the neuroendocrinology behind that, which means how our brains and hormonal systems work with good attachment and and and, and bonding and all that, and um, as well as training in Reichian psychotherapy and and healing trauma through somatics. So this is my background. I've been doing this in this field for 30 years. And what I came to understand was one of the keys in in this journey is it really is beginning to move from this state of of fear or or panic or trauma to a state of openness and love. This is everyone's on this journey. You everyone is on the spectrum of you know on, on of this journey. And some people, of course, have had have severe trauma, and they're in one place, and other people less so. But it's relevant for everyone. And what I began to understand is that we are we're taught principally that in order to begin to heal our nervous system, which is necessary to heal from trauma or anxiety or depression or whatnot, to to regulate our nervous system. And and now people are understanding. It's become very popular understanding that how the, the mechanisms of how this work, increasing our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and relax and befriend and tend part of our nervous system, as opposed to the fight or flight part. We need to we need to really tune up what's called our, our vagal nerve, our vagal nerve, and or our vagus nerve, and and bring our body into a state where we're more coherent, where our Brain waves are more co- coherent. Where we're in a, a calm place, where we can interact with the world from a, a collaborative place, from um, you know, from a, a healed and healing place. And so, working with our nervous system in this layer in this way is key. And understanding that one of the most powerful ways we can regulate our nervous system is coming into deeper contact with the earth. And again, I've mentioned this before, what, what they've shown in studies of people healing in hospitals is even a picture of nature begins to do this for us, but all the more so when we're in real contact with nature. For, for people who live in a city, this is your, your local city parks. For people who have access to, to bigger, you know, more wild parks or, or, or forests or, or live in a more natural setting and and there's you know meadows and you know, grasses and all that it's just it's just getting out there among the plants and um, and with the earth and there is a whole incredible science behind this now that's loosely called nature bathing or forest bathing and at this point there are probably around 70 peer reviewed randomized controlled trials what that's that's the gold standard of of clinical trials that show how being in nature how how opening to the earth improves your your nervous system it improves and helps people heal from trauma from anxiety from depression and helps our hearts heal so for people who have cardiovascular disease it helps our hormones balance it helps our immune system work better it helps protect us from cancer 
and on and on. And I, I joke that if this were available in a pill, it would be <laughs> mandated, right? <laughs> it would be it would be the new mandatory thing. You know, I'm not gonna. You know, that's it. That's a that's a whole other conversation. But what I'm saying, it is so powerful. Just connecting with nature, and and for anyone on a healing and awakening journey. Being within that connection is going to start giving you the codes you need to heal, to open, to awaken, and to evolve. So it's not just healing, but it's our, our own personal development. And, and this is how we're designed. We are by nature. It's a biological reality that we are biophilic beings. And, and what does that mean? Biophilia has a specific definition in the science world which means is that we experience physiological love for the natural world and plants. When we see a, a beautiful plant, a tree, a flower that we love, we release oxytocin, which is the love hormone or the cuddle hormone. So this is happening all the time. We just, as we can love a, another human, we can love an animal, that same kind of love affair is happening with all of the natural world. And when we're when we're in that, when we're open to that, our our biochemistry is changing. We begin to open to this this the these molecules of of beauty, of bliss, of healing that are very real. This is this is this is <laughs> it sounds woo on a certain level, but the woo is true. It's absolutely grounded and essential. And so, whenever we're talking about a healing path or a magical path or an awakening path. We need to be thinking in this in bigger terms and in connecting to our ecosystems, to the earth. And so this it's a huge, huge piece. Yeah. Wow. So, okay, so I wanna um switch gears a little bit and talk about well, this is all actually very interrelated. <laughs> um, but in your book, you, which you co-authored, um, uh, I believe co-authored, right? Creatrix yes. of all. Um you call sorry you you refer to the womb as the creatrix of all, but the the name of your book now it's uh, escaping me. What is it called again? Right, w- womb awakening. Womb awakening, and then what's the the rest of it? It's called like yeah, womb awakening. Uh, uh, oh, it's a uh, womb awakening, awakening to the um, the creatrix of all life. Okay, that's and, what I, <laughs> I remember the creatrix because you spelled it with an X, which I loved. Um, yeah, well, it's a, it's it's an actual title. It's a womb awakening, initiatory wisdom from the creatrix of all life, and yeah, it, and the idea is is that one of the first things. So so my my healing journey really began with by by diving into what I call. The, f- the world of feminine energetics and feminine healing. And I, I, when I say that, I don't mean just man, woman, but I mean feminine as in yin and so as it's viewed in the Taoist world, which are all of the qualities and aspects of life that have this, this mother quality or this womb quality, this holding quality. So the earth, of course, is a part of this. The earth is the womb that births all life on this planet. Women's wombs birth all human life on this planet. Every living human, of course, comes from a womb. So if we're thinking about how we're going to heal ourselves and heal the next generation, we need to really start thinking about how are we going to heal the wombs? How are we going to heal women's wombs on this planet? How are we going to help heal and connect and awaken our connection to the earth womb? And so they are all interlinked in this, I call them nested wombs of creation. And I also think about cosmology in the same way. There's, you know, we're our, our galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy, which was, which was named because of, you know, it's the same kind of feminine metaphors. It's because it looked like a splash of, of, of milk, of, you know, (laughs) of the galactic mother's breast milk across the night sky. This is how the Milky Way was named. And at the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole, this dark, fertile, uh, incredible black hole that has the mass of 4 million suns that actually is, is what birthed all the stars and the planets in our galaxy by the, the gravitational waves that are emitted and the other energies that are emitted from this galactic womb. And it's not just 
me and my my perspective that hey this is these are all <laughs> womb like womb like energies but this is how every traditional culture on this earth viewed the world and so for example the maya people viewed our the black hole at the center of our galaxy as the mother womb that that births everything in existence long before science proved it but in the book womb awakening that my wife and i wrote we document all of all of the different womb connections and womb magic and uh, womb art and history and cosmology throughout all of the, the cultures of the world and and so it's a huge piece it's a it's a it's a core part of it why did you spend so much time kind of looking at the womb and you know and, and you, you know you call it the creatrix of all but can you also talk about how how the womb actually relates to the concepts of of biomancy sure right and so as as we are you know our 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 process of birth and evolution always takes place in the context and container of womb energies there is no such thing as separated transcendental spirituality we all have a body right you know we and we we have to our spirituality has to include that and we as as every traditional and elder culture has known we have a first birth that comes from our biological mother's womb it's it's a huge piece how that birth happens the dynamics around that how our mother was supported during pregnancy or even before pregnancy and conception and through through it all and during the birth process how that womb time experience what we were exposed to in terms of nutrition and sunlight what our mother was exposed to that has a massive and long standing or long lasting impact on our biology through through epigenetics because it modifies our genetic expression our experiences in the womb profoundly modifies our genetic expression also our consciousness our we find that the patterns, the emotional patterns, the energy patterns we experienced in the womb tend to repeat themselves, the good ones and the bad ones, so until we, we heal them, um, and, until we bring our, our attention and consciousness to that. So there's this womb that forms us. Now, the piece that most modern people have forgotten is that there is a second birth process. It's an individuation process. And what I mean by that is very simply, growing up becoming a full adult a real adult and what this what this process means and meant to to elder cultures and indigenous cultures was coming into direct relationship to not just our biological parents but to our primordial parents of our mother earth and the sun and so what you what you look at is there is a primary impulse to form a direct relationship to the earth and to the sun as an adult being, because this is the source of our energy, our power, our spiritual connection. And this is universal across all the elder cultures. And it has traditionally, and still is in some places, ceremonially and, and ritually supported. So supported with rituals and ceremonies. And whether it's in the, in the mystery schools and mystery traditions of the West and the ancient Near East, or whether it's in indigenous traditions, there are rites of passage or, or mystery initiations where we are rebirthed into and through the womb of the earth. So not our biological mother, but rebirthing through the earth where we become, we become children or, or sons or daughters of the earth with the direct connection. And, and so biomancy is is really it's rooted in these ancestral and and lineage practices that a lot of modern people have forgotten and so it is a a, a modern a modern way it's it's been recreated with fresh and new language and 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 new perspectives for our our modern times but it is really all about connecting to these these deep womb sources earth womb source and and beyond cosmic womb source so, and, and what are some like kind of exercises or practices that you can recommend for folks who want to maybe engage um, a little bit more deeply with their womb? Sure, sure. Well, 
the the womb healing and womb awakening world is so Sarah and I we we wrote this we wrote a book about it and and did a lot of work and 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 taught a lot of people and it's it's now becoming a really um it's now becoming really popular there are a lot of folks that are teaching about this and there are many ways for 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 women to connect to their wombs and for for all people to connect to their womb energy center and this can happen through breath through through movement through through dialogue and and mapping and and so uh, there, there are many ways to do that. Now, what I and it's it is a I want to say it's a, it's foundational for our own body energy center. So, in for example, in the Taoist traditions, which the Taoist traditions of 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 China, of ancient and modern China, and all of the martial arts or the alchemical movement practices. So, this could be Tai Chi or Qigong are working with this womb energy centered approach and it's called the hara in in the japanese tradition or japanese language and the shinto tradition but there are so there are many different schools and ways of working where we are moving from the center thinking from the center um you know uh, and activating activating our center because it's a source of our power and our creative power now and the work I teach now with biomancy, I teach practical ways of linking our own energy centers, our own womb energy center, and our other energy centers to the to the earth womb, right? So, so linking ourselves to the source of primordial creation and power that is at the womb of the earth. So this planetary birthing field that births all life on this planet. So it birthed us, for example. And when we begin to synchronize our bodies and our consciousness, our womb energy centers are and, and beyond, so not just the womb energy centers, but all of our body with the these this planetary birthing field, we begin to co-create together. We are co-evolving in, in consciousness and healing together, right? So it's not just a a spiritual thing, it's a it's a biological thing because as we heal our body. The earth is healing because we're, our bodies are a piece of the earth, and when we heal our consciousness, we begin to we begin to extend and project that healing and 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 blessing energy to all of the earth around us. So we we play as humans. We have this really important niche in the ecosystem uh, and this capacity to consciously create and co-create and 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 so and so really that's i'm i'm all about helping remember that connect helping remember that connection and inspiring that connection and again practically speaking there i this is what i teach in biomancy university there are are simple ways to begin i every equinox and solstice i offer free classes and and ceremonial space to teach something that I call Sola Terra breathwork. So Sola is in sun, Terra is in earth, and it's an alchemical breath practice to begin to link the energies of the sun and the earth through our bodies. So this is this is classical alchemy practice and classical wisdom uh, coming from, this is the kind of practice or, or the energies behind it are familiar to most of the elder and traditional cultures and magical and alchemical cultures across the world you see you see similar or parallel things again in Taoist tradition and ancient egyptian tradition and and gnostic christianity and etc et wow um i'm just sort of like really thinking about everything um and just integrating it cuz i you know it's just uh, I'm thinking about this link between ourselves and the womb of the earth and Gaia and and just how deeply that connection, you know, already exists. And I think how, like you said, you walk people through this reconnection. Um, and and also the the you know, the equinox, the solstice, the importance of these, I would call them portals, and how whenever we want to kind of set intention or bring something, maybe birth something from, from the womb, um, these portals actually give us, um, almost like a, a magical doorway 
Um, and I want to actually double click on that. You know, why equinoxes and um, solstices are are so important. Yeah, great question. And this is something that has been forgotten by so many modern people. But to give give a historical context for this, all across the world, for thousands of thousands of years ago, mega, the megalithic cultures and traditional cultures built temples that honored the equinox. They were earth temples. They were stone temples. You see this all across the world that were aligned to receive the sunlight at equinox. And most of them, or many of them, are designed in a way, we'll, we'll talk about the, the earth mounds of, say, the, the, what are now, you might think of it as, as the Celtic lands. And so, say, in Ireland or in England or in and northern and western Europe, there were these earth mounds that were created, again, 5,000 to 6,000 years ago with tunnels that, that burrowed deep into the center of this earth mount that were shaped in this, with female anatomy. They were shaped with a central canal and, and uh, what and side channels that are lined up to fallopian tubes or ovaries that received the fertilizing sunlight at dawn of the equinox that would shine all the way into this chamber, deep into the center of this earth mound, which represented the earth's womb, and bring new life and new consciousness. So this is what our ancestors have been doing <laughs> for a long time all across the world. So it must have been massively important if they were taking all that time and energy to build these incredible structures. And what we know, what we now know, so what the ancients knew and what science, modern science, is beginning to show and prove again is that the equinox is not just an important portal in the seasonal calendar, a symbolic time where the earth is beginning to change from, from say, summer to fall, for example, or winter to spring, but it is a biomagical portal, just the word you said, right? It's a biomagical portal or opening where they, our connection to the energies of the earth and our connection to sunlight actually reset our circadian or our, our, our circannual biology, we'll talk more about that in a sec, for the next six months. So every single cell in our body has biological clocks. We are time beings. This, the study of this is called chronobiology. And all those clocks are lined up and set in sync to sunlight, natural sunlight and natural darkness. And particularly at these portals of the equinoxes, the sunlight that we receive and the darkness that we receive literally encode our biology to begin a, a massive shift in how we are going into the winter time or how we're going into the summertime. And not just at a, at a biological level, but at a consciousness level, at a spiritual level, at a metaphysical level. At the fall equinox, we began to plant the seeds that are going to be the dream visions at the winter solstice and that are then rebirthed at the spring equinox. Right? And this story, this story of the, of the dying of the light and the deep winter darkness that is restorative and regenerative in, in our, our dreaming time and our vision time, and then the rebirth of the light and the earth, this is the subject, this, this dance, this sacred dance between the sun and the earth is the, is the subject of all of the different mystery school traditions in the Western, Western mystery traditions and in the ancient Near East. It is that important, has a, has a real biological effect, a profound biological effect, and, and science is just waking up to this. Hmm. So it is very important for people then to to take these uh, these kind of transitional um, periods very, I would say, um, importantly and in a sacred space. So um, so okay. So I want to. <laughs> we have so many more questions, but we're kind of coming at time. Uh, so Azra, you know, looking back on your career, it seems like you have really gone into deep study of so many different disciplines and modalities, you know, to come up with this philosophy. It's just fascinating. Uh, what has surprised you the most looking back? 
<laughs> well, uh, perhaps the biggest surprise is how obvious it is in a certain way, right? And <laughs> and to our ancestors, this would have just been bread and butter. Yeah, of course. Of course, you're outside attuning to the Earth's magnetic fields, to the sunlight, to the equinox, to the solstice, right? Of course you are. I mean, you know, we just know that. We don't have to ask about it or remember it, right? But how this wisdom has been forgotten in this modern world with our institutionalized medical systems and our institutionalized religious systems and, you know, and and how how simple it is and how powerful it is. And so in my quest to really understand health, healing, radiance, personal development and evolution over the last 30 years and, and all of the and all of the different all of the different studies and and practice that I've undertaken, the thing that's most amazing to me is how powerful this is, how strong it is, how it takes any existing modality, whether it's a, a psychotherapy or whether it's a spiritual path or whether it's a somatic awakening path or, um, you know, just, just, just how healthy we are, how long we live, how good we feel in our body. But when we can connect in, into this eco magic and, and bio magic to this, the natural world this way into the magic in our bodies, it is so strong and so powerful. And so, one of the things I did in, in medicine, people came to me who had really complex illnesses. They had gone to so many other doctors and, and couldn't get help. They didn't, you know, they they were they were looking for answers. And and in my and you know in my desire to to help these folks, these patients, and and myself and and everyone, I I began to see just how powerful how how people can become unstuck, you know, whether it's at a, at a magic and manifestation level or whether it's at a health level or at a spiritual level, when they simply began to reconnect in this deep way. So it is a physical process and involves our body, but it's also a conscious connection. It's opening our heart to this kind of connection. It's opening our, our bio field, our, our, our living energy field, which is measurable, right? This is again, not woo. This is a real part of our of our of our biophysics and it's it's just how strong it is and how many people i have seen have amazing health results that previously could not could not really heal until they until they began to work in this way wow so profound and okay so and where um you know, where can people find you? What's like the best place to find you? I know that you also have Biomancy University. Um, can you tell us about your offerings and how we can get in touch? Yeah, sure. So so people can find me at my website, osrabertrand.com. I'm also on social media at Instagram and on Facebook. And I have I have lots of free resources on the website. I have essays and audio essays meditations you can access i and on the like i said before at equinox time and solstice i've been doing free public events uh if people want to go deeper i have i have biomancy university which is a, there's a six month immersion and a in a 12 month full diploma program so there there are many ways to connect if if you feel called to i'd, I'd love to connect with you i'd love to see you join in this this network of wonderful people who are exploring these paths. Amazing. For those who want to check out the book, uh, the book is incredible. I almost feel like there's such a potent energy in all the words uh, in the book. So um, can you remind us again uh, where where folks can find the book and the name of the book? Yeah, sure. So so there, there are two books that my wife and I, Saren Bertrand, have, have co-authored co-authored. And one of them is Womb Awakening, Initiatory Wisdom from the Creatrix of All Life. And the other is Magdalene Mysteries, The Left-Hand Path of the Feminine Christ. And what they both have in common is this, this earth-centric, feminine-centric cosmology and the history of where all that has come from. And, and so those books are out and published. I'm, I'm excited that I will have the new book, a new book, Biomancy, 
our future coming out hopefully in the next in the next in the next bit that's the release has not yet determined on that but there are many ways to connect uh, at that level and Azra, what is your kind of final call to action for folks listening? What do you, what's kind of your main message, your main takeaway? Yeah. So I think the the main takeaway or or the the practical call to action is just get out there for five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, whatever you have, and connect with the earth, connect with the light, connect with the sun. If you can do it at sunrise. That's wonderful. If you can do it, <laughs> if that's not the best time for you, that's okay. Get out there, open your heart, open your body, be in connection, be in communication. Understand that we are our quantum electromagnetic, super sensitive organisms living in this living world of other sentient beings that are just wanting to connect with you. So get out there and do it. Start, you know, start with the small steps, the micro practices. And you'll you'll immediately feel it, even with small steps. Amazing. Azra, thank you so much for your time. This is so inspiring and just so appreciate the work that you're doing. And we will leave all the links in the show notes uh, for folks to get in touch with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yasmin. <laughs> for our audience, thanks for joining and for listening. In this episode, we learned about biomancy, and you can tune into Gateways to Awakening, where we host one on one conversations with leading experts on wellness, well being, and spirituality. Thanks again. <laughs>